Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Democrats desperately need one swing vote. They just learned their fate. In the thick of the Brett Kavanaugh whirlwind of reporting and commentary, young conservatives Nicarama contributes some information of which you may not be aware, something that hasn't gotten as much attention as it probably deserves. There are swing Republican votes in the Kavanaugh debate, but there are also swing Democratic votes. Possible Liffey GOP holdouts have garnered the lion's share of focus, Murkowski, Collins, Flake, but at least a smattering of Dem senators have given the impression they might support Kavanaugh's nomination in the crunch. And, writes Arama, one of those potential swing Democrats just gave a very revealing statement. Then, from the Daily Wire. Senator Joe Manchin, DWV, another potential swing vote in the Brett Kavanaugh confirmation, strongly signaled a yes vote on Wednesday. According to Manchin, he will base his vote on Kavanaugh's life from age 22 to 53, not his life in high school, which Democrats have increasingly scrutinized. I am looking at the gentleman as an adult from 22 to 53, 31 years of professional service, Manchin told Al Jazeera. I am looking at him as a father. As a person in a community, how he interacts with his community. I am trying to put the human side to it. It sounds like Joe Manchin is getting ready to vote for Kavanaugh. This is how I interpret his statement that his vote will be based on Kavanaugh's life since, not prior to, his college graduation. Well, that's an e-knockingly sensible way to see things. Haven't seen boatloads of that from the Democratic caucus for quite a while now, have we? Good for the senator from West Virginia. Now, while that's not a definitive, cautions Arama, it does suggest he's not going to be influenced by things before then. News his mansion was politely flooded with input from his home state constituents urging him to pull the yes lever on President Trump's Supreme Court pick. They would not be happy with him if he voted no as Kavanaugh is supported in West Virginia by 58 percent. Prior to the sexual allegations, Manchin had been looking like a yes. Manchin was one of three Democrats who voted to confirm Trump's first Supreme Court nominee, Neil Gorsuch. Imagine that. We the people letting their elected honorable know their feelings about an important public matter. Letting him know in big numbers. Doing it respectfully. And having an impact. I recall a prominent former politician from up in the New England area saying on a radio talk show that when an official hears personally from those who hold the power to keep him in or shoo him out, it does get his attention. She particularly stressed handwritten, or typed out, and mailed letters, as opposed to email, strike home. Just a few of them would serve the attention-getting purpose, she insisted. If memory serves, she used the term freak out to describe the politician's reactions. And I'd imagine a face-to-face. Firm but civil interaction would be even more compelling for most polls who have an interest in keeping their post. Manchin has made previous statements saying he would not allow Ford's allegations to exclude Kavanaugh if they remained unsubstantiated and uncorroborated. Well, after completion of this seventh FBI inquiry into the misty long ago of the 53 year old appeals court judge, corroboration remains blindingly lacking for the most scurrilous accusations leveled against him. So, I guess we should count on a thumbs up for Brett Kavanaugh from the Mountain State's second term senator and former governor? And the good news keeps coming, and now, adds Arama, more indication, Arizona's Senator Jeff, Flake may be a yes. I'm assuming Flake has been hearing cascadingly from pro Kavanaugh Americans, so, if that last statement about him proves trustworthy, we'll have seen a demonstration of a heartening dynamic, wild and tumultuous opposition from the left rattling a senator. Flake looked like he might throw in with the Dem opposition after a pair of progressive anti-Kavanaugh firebrands cornered him in an elevator, only to be neutralized by clear-thinking, fair-minded folk making known their minds to their wobbling senator. Once more, notwithstanding the hopelessness too often stoked by cutthroat leftists and woe-is-me Republicans, when God and country-loving people get involved in a civic churn, it can make a practical and meaningful difference. It's in that spirit that Arama admonishes, the GOP has 51 senators, Democrats have 49. But they may be missing, a, GOP senator if the vote goes on Saturday because Steve Daines of Montana has his daughter's wedding on that date and can't be there. So keep contacting Manchin and all the swing senators to encourage them to vote to confirm. Thing is, right now it looks like those who revere the Constitution and America's founding principles are gaining the edge in this Kavanaugh clash. Of course, it's still possible to get smug get distracted, lose that edge, let our efforts falter, and days from now find ourselves stunned, scratching our noggins and wondering bewilderingly, how come Manchin and Flake ended up dropping the ball on Kavanaugh? Sometimes our elected leaders blow it, 
because those they are allegedly representing blow it themselves. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.